Hi, and welcome to another Digital Devotional. My name is Steve Jewell, and so glad to have you studying with us. And, you know, I've heard some from so many of you with questions via email and, and texting and even commenting on uh, the YouTube channel with questions, and, and that, that is wonderful. I'm so thrilled to do that. I hope my responses to your questions are helpful. Uh, and I also am so appreciative of the feedback that you offer me because it's always great to hear how the Lord is working. And, and not that we teach the word or preach the word merely for human approval, but it is nice to know, it is helpful to know that it is uh, rewarding and it is uh, stimulating and it is challenging and it is guiding for you in your walk with Jesus. And so that that is wonderful and thank you so much for that. Uh, in this lesson this morning, we are continuing now in the Gospel of Mark, and this lesson will be in Mark chapter 4, verses 21 through 25. Jesus has been uh, teaching in parables and then teaching what parables mean, the significance of them, and in, in particular, in this uh, situation, Jesus is with his disciples and he's teaching them uh, specifically uh, as hearers, uh, as opposed to just overhearers, those that, that dab in uh, and might not even be fully receptive to uh, what he's saying, but find it curious or interesting, but not anything that will have long-term transformative and e eternal shifting realities in their life. And so uh, as we get ready to read the word, let's pray. Lord, we ask that you would speak just as you did in uh, Mark as he uh, was moved by the Spirit to to write these accounts down of you. We pray, Lord, that the same spirit that inspired him would inspire the reading and the pondering and the applying of your word to our life and our study together now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Mark chapter 4, verses 21 to 25. And Jesus said to them, is a lamp brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed and not on a stand? For nothing is hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything secret except to come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And still more will be added to you. For to the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now Jesus is continuing and teaching with his disciples now. There's, there's a cryptic nature to what he's talking about here. And there, there's still parable uh, realities taking place as he teaches them. It's not like he's saying flat out this a, B, C, D, what he's teaching, he's by inference, by parable. And, and there's two uh, parables that he teaches his disciples about here that I think have to do with uh, us being uh, ready to hear and to heed. Now, that's a mnemonic device I use just because I like how it continues with the letter H and it has a nice sound to it. But, but it means to be to hear and be receptive and as you're receptive, then, then your hearing and receptivity turns into response or action. And that's really what God is after. God is not just after filling our minds with all kinds of academic propositions and truths and realities and facts or, or even to make us experts in theology. One of the things that we have to realize is even Satan has perfect knowledge of God in terms of information, but he is not responsive. It is not something that is translated into a way of being that honors God. And so God wants us to hear and to heed. And in these parables, he gives us two ways in which or two components about hearing and heeding. In the first parable, he talks about light. You know, we don't we don't light a lamp. We don't, in, in, in their day, you know, maybe light a torch or um, some sort of lantern and you don't bring that into the house and then cover it in a sense to smother it. You, you light a lamp in order to benefit from the illuminating, illuminating realities of that light. Light illumit illuminates whatever is hidden 
and it exposes, it, I'm sorry, it, light illuminates what is in darkness and it exposes what is in that darkness. Parables, Jesus is teaching in parables about what parables mean here. Parables are meant to reveal truth in a powerful and relatable and practical way. And this parable of light is designed to remind us and show us that, that the light of God is designed to illuminate the darkness in our minds and in our hearts. The word of God is designed to illuminate the dark and then to expose and reveal and bring into the light what is in the dark, which is our sin or our hardness against God or our wickedness or our defiance and, and all the things that even my own heart, I loathe not honoring God with all that I am. And so when the light of the, the glory of God in Jesus and in his word shines into our lives, it dispels the darkness and it exposes what resides in the darkness that we might bring it into the light to confess it and allow God in his mercy and grace to heal us. So first of all, he tells a parable about light, and it's not designed to, to hide, but to expose and reveal. And then he talks about a parable having to do with measurement. He says in verse 20, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Jesus is talking about not only having our awareness illumined and our uh, heart exposed and, and laid bare before God so that we can see and be who we truly are and in God's grace grow into his glory and goodness, but we also have to be careful to not then hold people to an unreasonable standard. Jesus, in a sense here, is saying that, that the standard that we hold other people accountable to is the very same standard to which we will be held accountable. Now, that's terrifying. Well, I hear that, and that is terrifying because I certainly find it much easier to point out the flaws and the failings in other people's lives. But then I want to cover and hide and shroud those in my own life. And so these parables really go hand in hand that where the light of God shows, it exposes. And then we have to be careful that once it's exposed in our life or in the life of others, that we do not enter into a, a, a judgmental mindset that is so unreasonable, unfair, that, that the measure that God uses to uh, evaluate me is the same measure God uses to evaluate you. And and there's not a special measure for me or for you. There isn't even, it's not like God says, well, Steve's, Steve's such a great guy. I'm going to hold everybody accountable to his expect. No, my expectations must come into alignment with the Lord's ex ex expectations. And so the second parable in, in this measure thing is meant to challenge each of us as hearers personally and directly. Truth, all truth, all God's truth as we learn it and we see it and know it in the light, this truth must first be applied to our lives before we can apply it to others. That's such a great temptation for us to, to learn something or have an insight and, and then finally think, well, I'm going to hold other people accountable. I'm going to expect them to understand and see what I see. You know, I, I, there's a lot I've learned and I understand and, and there's a graciousness that, that, that needs to come out of those that might be uh, more mature in Christ or know more. And so Jesus here is really talking about humility. Humility as the light of God shines in our hearts and humility as God gives us knowledge and insight and wisdom that we not be those that now heap up expectations that are unreasonable. This is precisely what the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the teachers of the law had been doing as they had misunderstood the law and the, of Moses, the commandments, and all the other things that they've added on. And here, gloriously and graciously, Jesus is here to tell us that he is the measure. He is the light. And so as we allow him to draw us to his own heart and envelop us in his arms of grace and care, we are in the best possible place. And so this day, this day as God shines his light into your heart, 
and you see things or God shows you things that, that are not great, this is designed for us to, in, in repentance and confession, to say, God, please be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive this. And as God gives you knowledge and insight, this is designed to humble us so that we can live more gloriously and graciously to others. And, and in time, maybe teach, maybe share, but to allow God to bring people along in that process of maturity. This is complicated stuff, but it's simplified when we know that the one to whom we all must look constantly is Jesus. When we take our eyes off Jesus, it's so easy for us to uh, not only lose step of his glory in our own life, but it's easy for us to enter into judging and, and, and holding people accountable to our measures that we don't want applied to our own life. Brothers and sisters, as we go through our days today, as I go through my day, I want to be mindful of what it is to be tender-hearted to the light and the glory of God in our lives, in my life, and to, to graciously point people to Jesus. Would you join me in doing that? Let's pray. God, help us. Help us, O oh Lord, to honor you this day. And as you minister to our hearts, as you show us who we are and, and keep hold us accountable to where we're flawed and broken yet, where we have not yet surrendered and laid down arms, where, where holiness has not taken root in our, our thinking or our behaving, our acting. God, help us to, to be honest, to acknowledge that to you and seek your help. And Lord, as you grow us, the, the measure of, of understanding and godliness, I pray, God, with humility, help us to live gloriously and graciously for you, to make you known, to point people not to ourselves or to just a higher standard of living or moral conduct, but let us point people to you, Jesus. You say, as I am lifted up, you'll draw all people to you. Let us lift you up today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so let us be hearers and he, those who heed before we decide to heap on others unreasonable standards. God bless you today, and I look forward to another lesson with you tomorrow.